Hey guys, Sebastian from Madrigal here. This is part 7 in a video series where we create a Vulkan renderer for the Basis game engine. A video series which I think will take around 10 parts to come to completion based on the current velocity of development. Let's see how close I get. In the last part we implemented the texture class. So the texture VK, VK class which we're looking at right now. And we did that so that we uh, could move on to the render target and implement that fully. And so let's have a look at where we where we actually got left off previously. So we have this render target VK class here. And uh, render target VK can, as we've previously mentioned, it can be created as a swap chain render target, which is handled by this init as swap chain RT. And it can also be created as a so-called traditional render target through this init function here. And uh, this is the base class, GFX API render target. It just stores the description. And so what we actually need to do in render target VK, which is the Vulkan version, is that here in create, if we're not a swap chain render target, that means that we are a... <clears throat> a so-called traditional render target, tied to one or more attachments, i.e. textures. And this is the place where we will want to actually hook that connection up. <clears throat> I'm kind of losing my voice here. I apologize. All right, so let's get cracking. Let's get cracking. And let's get cracking by actually having a look at disk, right? Yes, attachments. So this M desk is an instance of a render target description. The render target description has a number of attachments and some convenience functions that we don't need to care about. Each attachment has a type, a texture, an array element, and a format. And those are essentially the ones that the the, the so those represent the data that we will want to actually hook up to this render target. So, uh, let's push this down a little bit and we'll start by just resetting everything. This is stuff that I, I, can, I can kind of copy paste as is from other, other uh, rendering backends like direct 3D or metal, it all works the same. But now we can go in here and do GFX API render target attachment. Let's call it attachment and we iterate with a ranged for loop over the attachments. So the first thing that we can do is we can we can cast the texture in here. Uh, into a texture VK because we know that all the textures that come in will be Vulkan textures. There's no no chance of them being anything else. And the first thing that we will do is we'll, we'll grab a reference to to them. Uh, so we'll, we'll hold on. The render target once you hand it a bunch of textures, it will add a reference to those textures so that they don't actually they don't actually die prematurely if someone else releases them. And what we will do here is we will do like a, a, a delayed uh, initialization of, of um, the width and the height. So we can do get description width and we can do the same thing with height. Like 
this. And once we've initialized this to something, and then we want to make sure that all the other attachments are actually the same. This is just like I, I do this I do this with every render backend, so I, I probably have at some point accidentally passed passed different uh, attachments of different sizes and that's that's not really something I want to do. Right, so that's just essentially making sure that the uh, attachments are the same uh, size and also simultaneously initializing the width and the height and then we have of course we have two types of attachments we have uh, we have the color type and we have the depth type which can also be a depth uh, stencil or it is a depth stencil so it can also be a stencil attachment but here we only have color and and depth and depth kind of implies depth stencil so uh, let's do something like i and then uh, m color attachment count and we increment that and now we can use color attachment images for i and texture and this is where we we get to that stuff that we added last time so we need to get the image out of the texture we need to get the view out of the texture so texture get vk image view and um, we use texture array element and we use attachment format and we have this last boolean parameter which I added which I think we will actually need but it won't hurt it hurt to set it anyway but I, I think that that parameter basically forces the MIP level and the array count to be one and I think that is something that we we are required to to make sure in this case right so we have the color and then we have the depth and uh, here we can just we can just assert that we we don't have a depth attachment already because because that is not supported so we assert that we don't have it but then we make the boolean true to signal that we do now have it and then we do the same thing for this one so texture get vk image and the view is essentially the exact same thing is here and just copy that and the depth stencil format is get format attachment format like that okay so let's have a look at what we did uh, I did it. I did this pretty quickly because it's it's not kind of it's not very interesting, and I do this for all all the all the uh, render backends, so I can I can sort of do the same thing for all of them. So we iterate over the attachments that come in. We figure out the size of them. Then we figure out based on or then we based on their type, we we add the images, the views, and the formats either to the color attachment list or set them here for the depth stencil so with that done uh, we can now actually create the frame buffer and this is of course this is something that we did here already uh, vez vez create frame buffer so uh, we can essentially copy paste this and put it here and uh, the only thing we need to change here is uh, we need to we need to handle these image views a little differently. So let's let's just do let's do image VK image view attachments or something. And then I think we had a basis VK max color attachments, which. Uh, we can see here is defined as eight, and we use it as the size of these of these lists here. Now, 
when you create a frame buffer in Vulkan or in VEZ, uh, it ex expects every attachment to be in one list. So we, we do plus one because we want space for the depth stencil one as well. Right. And then we probably want some kind of uh, some kind of count variable here and we iterate over color attachment count plus plus one there we go and we we simply yeah this is kind of silly maybe this is not the best best way to do it but let's just let's just do it it's it, it will work it will work We're essentially just mem copying these over I could do it with a mem copy perhaps that would be that would be nicer oh it's not called attachments it's called attachment count and uh, if we have a depth stencil attachment then the um, then the last one will be the uh, depth stencil attachment image view and we just Increment that one more time, right? Except it's still not it's still not called that. It's called that. Right. Yeah. Okay, this is maybe a little silly. I I, I don't I don't care. Okay, it, it will work. It will work. Okay, so now we can simply give this as the attachment count, and we can have attachments as just attachments. Remove the data. Width is m width, height is m height, and layers is one. And we need pk result there, and frame buffer is already set. Cool. Looking good. Okay. So that's that is now us essentially grabbing a hold of the textures as they come in with this add reference here. And then grabbing the images and the image views out of them. Uh, what do I actually need the images? Do I need the images? Oh, I need the images for this other one. Yeah. yeah I need the images for the case where we're actually we're using it as a swap chain render target. So that's a, that's a little bit different. But I might as well push push it in this case as well. Right. So, what we still need to do is the destruction for this kind of render target. So, so here, if we are a swap chain render target, we actually go in and destroy the image views and images on, on the VES level. Uh, we don't really want to do that for, for this kind of... of uh, render target though because the render target or sorry the image views and the images they are kind of owned by these textures and the we should let we should let the texture destroy its own image and image view when the texture is destroyed uh, we're essentially just sort of borrowing it from from this one while in the uh, in the swap chain render target case we're actually creating the image there an image view there like directly in this class so it makes sense that we're destroying them here we don't want to do that we simply want to uh, go through the uh, the attachments that we got so that would be render target attachment attachment in the description attachments Oop. like so and we want to call attachment dot texture dot or not dot but arrow release so we're releasing uh, to sort of balance out this add reference here uh, and yeah that should be it essentially that's that's all we need to do so let's make sure that 
builds and it does so now with a little bit of luck we actually have everything we need to uh, to create render targets mm. I guess there, there might be one more thing that we'll want to do um, if we go to the VEC documentation and maybe we'll actually want to, to do this now so there was something called VEC uh, VEC render pass begin info right so I had a look at this and this documentation earlier and um, Vulkan has this concept of render passes and they're they're vastly simplified in VEC uh, you don't have to like create specific render pass objects anymore but you still have to use render passes to actually render something and to begin a render pass you call this VEC command begin render pass um, with a command buffer we'll, we'll get to command buffers in, in a bit but uh, you have this begin info VEC render pass begin info uh, which will give the frame buffer which is something that the render target has and you give it an attachment count and an attachment uh, array so this this kind of sounds like maybe we would actually want the render target to handle this for us essentially filling in not really calling the render pass begin render pass or anything like this but but given one of these guys render pass begin info um, it could actually fill in that info um, and, and, and sort of uh, prepare it for rendering to this render target so maybe maybe we'll actually do that still and then once we have that then hopefully the render target class will be completely done so let's have a look at how we would how we would do that um, I'm gonna copy copy this actually I'm gonna copy this guy so VEZ attachment reference because that's what will actually what we will be passing to this guy so uh, let's have a look I think if we if we were to actually create just a list of these guys here right and we'll Again, we'll do the basis VK max RT color attachment plus one because again we, we might have the the one depth attachment there, and then we have this other uh, well, not that not that thing but this thing, and then we have this other struct here which is that render pass begin info, so we can make a a, a method here which would be probably void void. And like make render pass begin info right or something like that. And just take the vez out there of the name. So you can give one of these guys info. And uh, let's have a have a quick look at what we actually do here. So uh, in this case, we have to we have to set things like the clear values, clear color, for example. And we also have to specify the, the load and store operations. So like load can be clear, for example, or it can be something like don't care. Like if you don't care what happens to what what is on that attachment. Um, and these things, in particular the clear values, they are uh, passed to something called the uh, render pass params. And where was that? Was that maybe in the render context? Yes, render pass params. So one of these guys. Uh, so you can see here that there's a bool for for we, again we have eight uh, a maximum of eight color targets or attachments, 
uh, and some depth and stencil clear values as well. So this this is essentially something that that we will want to give to this method as well. So let's do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, let's just do this. And this will probably be like a const ref, right? Uh, you can see that I've actually I've, I've forward declared it here because I've done the same thing for metal. Uh, if I remember correctly, let's have a look. Where is the metal one? So render target metal. Yeah. So in metal it works a little differently. You actually, create like an, this render pass descriptor object and, and and you pass it. But again, we we pass the same kind of of render pass params, and that's why I had this here already, and that's actually why I came up with this whole idea that this might be a pretty good idea to to do. So I, I feel even better about it now. Um, and this VEC API just kind of happens to fit pretty well into what I currently have and, and use. Okay. So how do we do this? How do we do this? So like we will probably want to once again iterate over our color attachments. So i is smaller than m color attachment count. And uh, take this what was it? This attachment reference so it's this this new list of things that we created here, and let's maybe initialize it to begin with, and we can have a look at what this guy has eaten. So it has load up, store up, stencil load, stencil store, uh, and uh, a clear value. Okay. Okay, okay, well, uh, load up is pretty easy. We can do params dot uh, m clear color for, and this is a list as well, so it would be for i, right? Yep, that's a list of booleans, and we do v k attach uh, command. Attachment uh, load op clear. Right? If this is set to true, then we set it to clear. And otherwise, we do attachment load op load. I think those are those are like the the two kind of most sensible. Like we have load clear, don't care. Those are the three ones that we we can really we can really do any I don't really have any use for the don't care value here but but if this is not set to be clear then I essentially I'm interested in what is already there so let's do the load upload instead right and uh, I think for the store op we'll just always set this to to store so store op store and then we have the stencil ones, and those are kind of more interesting. I, I don't really know what to put here currently. Uh, so maybe maybe we s we'll just do load up. Don't care. And for the stencil store up, we do store up. Don't care. Uh, I need to make like a note to myself that I need to actually I need to actually figure something out and, and put put some valid values here. I don't really use stencil buffering that much currently or at all really. Uh, so it doesn't matter right now but it will it will in the future. All right. So let's keep going. So vec 4 
clear color is is what this actual color value for this is, right? And so uh, <clears throat> we probably want to. What does this look like? Oh, it's like a union thingy. Okay. Okay. Let's just do. Let's just do the. Oh, with attachment reference. I clear value color and do this kind of cc.x cc.y cc.z and cc.w uh, sort of conversion deal here <clears throat> I think that that is probably all right okay so that's the that's the color attachments and then if we if we has a depth stencil attachment we can do essentially the same right oh oh hey right yeah forget i said anything about those because those will always be don't care because they're the color attachments right but um, yeah, here we don't have an I. This will be M col oh, color at. Come on. Ah. M color attachment count, and it will be that for everything. Yeah. So. So yes, this will always be don't care because they're they're a part of a color attachment. But here we actually have um, have some other things. So load is um, we do a load. No, sorry, we do a clear if uh, I think. Hmm. So this has like m clear depth or m clear stencil. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I, I suddenly got very, very unsure about this. Um, no, that's not that's not right. That's not right. So, I, I assume like in this case, uh, this obviously mapped to the stencil, but this is probably the depth. So, let's just do it like this. If if m depth. Oh, sorry, if M clear depth, then we clear the depth. Come on. Um, and store op is probably always store again. And then here we have the same kind of deal. So if M clear stencil. And we clear the stencil and otherwise we load it and we always store it and that's not supposed to be don't care it's supposed to be store yeah this is how it's supposed to be yeah okay i got a bit confused there sorry about that so we do clear value depth stencil depth is params m depth clear value Depth stencil stencil is params dot oh, uh, stencil clear value. So that's an unsigned 32 bit int, and that's an unsigned 8 bit int, but it's probably. Uh, I'm not sure why, why they want it as 32 bit. Well, maybe you can have a 32 bit stencil buffer, right? I'm not sure. Okay, so now we should be able to actually assign this info guy that we 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 got here as a as a perimeter as a reference mutable reference perimeter. So info dot uh, attachment count. Yeah, that would be if we have a depth stencil attachment. It would be m oops, m color attachment count plus one. 
otherwise it would be just a color attachment count uh, what do we have then then we have yeah, p attachments probably and that would be just we just assign this this uh, uh, array that we've been poking things into and the frame buffer is simply our frame buffer handle like so right so now it should be super easy for anyone who has a pointer to this render target and wants to begin a render pass uh, these parameters will be given to it it being the render context in this in this case and the render context will will feed one of these guys into this render target this will fill it up and uh, give it back and that is that is the thing that vez wants to begin a render pass like this so pretty cool pretty cool this is coming together quite nicely yes okay so that is hopefully the entirety of the render target uh, for now I, I do think it is because this is now sort of matches the metal one quite well and metal and VEZ are sort of similar in many ways I'm hoping this is this is all we'll need for the render target all right, so next time we will start looking into the buffer situation, which is the still after after several parts of this video series. This is still the the part that uh, causes it to crash currently in here because the uh, the buffer returns a null pointer there. So we'll finally get to actually implementing buffers, and when we have buffers, we we just need a few more classes to actually start rendering things, and that is quite exciting. So remember to like, subscribe, hit all the buttons, like all the buttons, and I'll see you in the next part. Bye.